Hi friends, it's Wayne Polson. Today is T minus 37 days and counting until the big reveal. That puts us somewhere on April 2nd, I think. <clears throat> so I'm glad all of you are along for the ride. And my promise was I would put out a video per day until that day. And then when that day comes, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You might not hear from me for a few years. Just kidding. I don't really know what's going to happen. Listen, yesterday I put out a video called uh, Rakers, Riders, Drags, and Depth Gauges. What are they? How do we maintain them? And it was just a short eight minute video, sort of an introductory thing. And I was inviting people's comments. And so I'd advise some of you who are interested in that topic, go down into yesterday's video. Check out the comments left by people like Bruce Arney, Brett Black, Angie Kay. It's enlightening to find out what people know about chains and to find out how much technicality there is in, in, a, in a chain. And I read an article that Bruce Arney sent to me. It's called, well, I don't remember what it's called. I just know it was put out by Carlton. And it has to do with um, the theory of chain operation, how chainsaw chains cut through wood. Very cool article. If I can find a copy online, I'll put a link in the description box below. Today, though, I want to continue on with yesterday. This is going to be a little bit shorter as long as I stop talking here soon. I basically have three graphics that I want you to look at. The first graphic shows a properly adjusted depth gauge and its relationship to the cutter. And you can see that what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the depth gauge limits the depth that the top plate the leading edge of the top plate is allowed to cut into the wood. And that thickness that you are seeing in that particular um, graphic is the optimal thickness for getting the right amount of removal of wood um, for the amount of power that you have to get the job done. It's the most efficient way and probably the safest way um, to remove wood from a, a kerf in a tree. Now, I'm going to show you this image here. The next image is a raker that has actually been filed too low. And if you notice in this image right away, you see that the thickness of the cut of the chip that it's trying to take out is quite a bit thicker than the first graphic. And so what that presents is a very rough experience. Uh, and it can be so rough that it'll actually stall the saw. And it'll be so rough that when you engage the tree with your saw using the bottom of your, of your uh, bar, it'll actually suck you into the tree. And that can be a little offsetting. If you're not well balanced, um, it can actually knock you to the ground. And, you know, with that going on, uh, who knows what could happen? You could run into your you know, your bar and, and get cut up. I mean, just nasty things can happen when you have that aggressive of a chain. If you're cutting with the top side of your bar, it's going to spit you out of the tree. And uh, that's even more dangerous, I think. There's a lot more that can go wrong when that saw is spitting you out of the tree as opposed to pulling you into it. But ideally, you don't want any of that to happen. You want the saw to engage itself into the wood without causing undue stress to yourself. Cutting through a tree shouldn't be a blood, sweat, and tears endeavor. It should be a joyful experience. It should be a rewarding experience. And it is if you maintain your chain, uh, your cutters, and your rakers properly. So that's a dangerous situation when you're trying to bite off more than the chain can chew. The last image I want to show you here is a raker that is set too high. Now, you can't really set a raker higher, but the way a raker gets higher is by continually filing on the cutter. And if you notice, that cutter actually is sloped downward. So the farther back you file that cutter, the lower the top plate, the leading edge, the working corner of that cutter is going to be. And in relationship to the raker, it actually can get below the height of the raker. And when that happens, the only thing hitting the wood is the raker. So you're not removing any wood. In the, I think in this graphic here, it looks like I have it set to where the raker and the uh, top plate are the same height. In a case like that, 
the cutter is still not going to engage the wood. You might get powder. And once you get powder and you find out you're not making a cut, you might apply more pressure against the bar. And when you do that, you're going to build up heat. You may start to get some wood removal, but it's also going to be exhausting. It's going to tire you out and it's going to wear everything out and you don't want that. So I guess you could call this kind of like the three bears principle. There's, you know, too much, too little and just right. So we'll go back right now to that just right graphic, folks. When you start off with a new chain, the ballpark goal is to have 25 thousandths of clearance between the top of the raker and the top of the, the cutting edge. Now, that of course depends on what kind of wood you plan on cutting. Softer woods, you can tolerate more of a gap. In harder woods, that gap may have to be a little bit closed. But my point is, that is a ballpark. It's a starting point. And as you start filing your cutter back, at some point you're gonna realize that your chips are getting smaller and smaller. So it's a good time at that point to look at your raker height and just file off a little bit of that raker. Now the tool I was using is a Husqvarna progressive raker gauge. Uh, there are other ones out there. That one I got from, uh, from Andre, uh, Bob 8888. And uh, it's nice, it has two sides to it. One is a hardwood side, the other one is a softwood side. I didn't show the softwood side of that in the video yesterday, um, so I apologize, but I will put an image of that here so that you can see it for yourself. And all it is is that the uh, softwood side allows you to take that raker down a little bit more than it would be for hardwood. Okay, so um, in this, I'm going to show you the hard side of the progressive depth gauge tool. I'm going to position this over the raker like that. And when I try to level this out, you can see there's just a very tiny bit of a protrusion of the raker above the depth gauge tool. That's the hardwood adjustment side. So I could take that down to where it's flush with the gauge and that would be a proper adjustment for this particular cutter. Now let's go to the soft side. So I'm gonna flip this around. We're gonna do the same thing. Position this over the cutter and the raker. And now you can see that there's actually more of a protrusion of the raker through the top side of the gauge. So we, we would be taking off more metal or more of the raker, giving the cutter more depth into the softer woods. All right, folks, that's all I have today. I wanted to cut this one real short. Please leave comments. Folks, I'm loving the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna get some more people that maybe will jump on this uh, video who aren't just uh, regular followers. So uh, whatever you do, folks, keep an eye out in the comments. If you see new people, say hi to them for me, please. And uh, help, me, help me meet these people. Help me to get them to feel comfortable on the channel. And uh, it'll just be a better thing for everybody if we do that. All right, folks, that's it. T minus 37 days and counting. I'll see you next time. Spread the love around.